Hello everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday free demo. We try to bring you these demos twice a month. You can always look at our previous and future ones on our calendar of events on our website www.beyondfabricinc.com and you should have a topic there with a link to our YouTube video and you can always subscribe to our channel to get notified every time we have a new Make It Monday. All right, let's start today's demo. We are going to make a dog bone pillow. So this is like a therapeutic pillow that's great to put behind your back, your neck. My sister loves to put it under her legs. You could use it for all kinds of fun applications. So first you need to put your pattern together. The pattern is available on our website, again, www.beyondfabricinc.com as a free download. It will print out like this. You're gonna have two pieces that will get taped together like this. You have a fold here, and this is where we're gonna match up to the fold of our fabric. Today we're using a quilt weight cotton. You can use quilt weight cotton, satin, fleece, knits. You could really use any kind of fabric for this project. The fleece makes a really super soft pillow, which is also for a great gift. Uh, but today though, we're using quilt weight cotton. So take your fabric and I'm using two thirds of a yard, which gave me plenty of room to pre-wash it. You do wanna pre-wash your fabric, highly recommend it. Uh, and then we're going to take our fabric, fold it over, take our pattern, this is where our fold is, and we're gonna line it up on the fold. We're gonna make sure that we have plenty of room here. Before we crease this, you're gonna take your seam roller and just give your fabric a nice little crease. You could also finger press. Don't want to use your iron. Do not wanna use your iron. Now we're going to cut out our pattern. You can put pattern weights on this, help hold it in place, or you can use your hand and hold it. I'm using a 28 millimeter size rotary blade cutter, reason why it helps to go around these curves. Now you can always mark it with a marking pen and then cut it out with scissors if you're more comfortable with that. There's one piece. Now let's do this again. You're gonna have three pieces for each dog bone pillow. Fold it over a little more so we have a bigger piece at the end so we could put it in our stash for the next time we're making a quilt or any other random project. Place it on the fold put some pattern weights on it, and cut. If you end up making a lot of these as gifts, you probably do not want just your paper pattern. You can always transfer this pattern onto template plastic so that it's a lot stronger and you're not gonna cut into your paper. Here's number two. So if you have a pattern that you use a lot, template pattern plastic, template plastic works really well. All right, let's go ahead and press. And 
and hold. Oh, don't shift it, don't shift it. Okay, back in place. All right, looks good. Now we have three pieces to make our dog bone pillow. So the first thing you're gonna do is take one of those pieces and lay it flat. Next, take a second piece and lay it on top. And it's actually going to, this crease will match your other crease. Now, if you noticed on your pattern, you're going to have marks on each side. Well, you have it on one side and when you put it together, it'll end up being on both sides of your fold. This is 3 8 in, and this is what our seam allowance is going to be. Take that piece that you just put down on top, open it up. And again, this is why we wanted that nice crease because we're able to see it. Take your pattern and your marking pen. I'm using a friction uh, heat erasing pen. You're going to line it up on the corner there and on that crease, make your mark. This is just gonna help us when we go to sew it where we need to start and stop. All right, so we have that marked. Line up your raw edges. Our creases are on top of each other. Take your pins or your clips and just on one side of this, we're going to clip it and pin it in place. So again, we're going to work from this dot all the way around to this dot. So let's go to our machine and get to sewing. So now that we have the one part marked, we're going to start sewing from this dot around the curve to the other dot only on one side. Again, we are using a 3 8 seam allowance. So we are going to make sure our needle goes down right where we made our mark. So that is where we are starting. So go ahead and start. Backstitch several times of these pillows are going to get a lot of abuse. Follow the edges, keep sewing, remove your pins. Oops, I didn't make it. I'm glad it is magnetic. By the way, these are made locally by Mr. Grouchies. We like his stuff. I don't think you can see it in the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. This is what, these obviously are not magnetic, but I threw them on there anyways. But it's a magnetic pin holder. Isn't it cute? have one side sewn, flip this over, and we have our middle crease which kind of helps guide this whole project. Take your third and final piece, match up 
those metal seams. and open and fold it over. So now we are gonna work from the other side. So we have this opened up. Transfer our marks. Match up your raw edges, pin or clip it, you can have a lot of fun with these dog bone pillows, you have three pieces, they don't all have to be the same fabric, you could also do a quilted one, and use up all kinds of scraps. I also one time did a pocket on one of the pieces, just put a pocket on the outside that you could put a rice bag in that you could heat up. So that feels really good on your back. Okay, we have it pinned. So now we're gonna sew from this dot all the way around to that dot. Back to the sewing machine to sew. Okay, again, we are starting at our point that we had transferred over. Make sure your needle goes down on that point. Stitch several times and follow along your curve, keeping your edges lined up. Just a reminder this is piece number two that we are sewing. We have done two. Now the final one is the main one. All right, y'all ready? Pay attention. Okay, so we have sewn this side and then we have sewn this one. So we have two pieces left to connect. So you're gonna have these two connected, these two connected, and now we need to connect these two. So make sure our middle crease are, is still there. Line up your raw edges. You will only be sewing through two layers at a time. Every time you're sewing a side, make sure you're only sewing through two layers of fabric. If you have another one on there, it's not gonna make a dog bone shape. Well, maybe it'll be flat. It won't be complete dog bone. Put some clips in. We already have our mark there from previous. However, now, you need to make a, put your marks on to where you're going to flip it. So you're not gonna sew all the way around this. You're gonna leave a little hole, not on a curve. It's gonna be right here in the middle. So right here, you're gonna leave a hole big enough to flip. You will also be hand stitching this hole closed. So I like to leave it just big enough to flip, but not too big that I have to hand stitch the whole thing closed. unless you like to hand stitch and then leave however big you want it to be. And one more pin. Okay, let's go and make our final stitch. This is our final sewing around our pillow. Make sure, again, needles going down on that point. Okay. 
back stitch. Y'all have seen this twice already, so I think you have the point. to your marks that you have made where you're leaving the pillow open, make sure to back stitch several times because when we go to stuff this thing, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on that seam and we don't want it to just come apart by not back stitching. So I now have a hole so we can flip it and let's finish it up. It is lined up. And back to the last point. Back stitch. All right. Now we need to pink all these raw edges. You can use pinking shears or you can use a uh, the pinking blade on your rotary cutter. Remember, one side at a time. We are doing this to help remove the bulk. So when we flip it, our curves will lay smooth. Also, in this area here, we're going to make a clip to the stitches. Do not go through the stitches or you have to go back to your machine and sew. So we're just Flipping it down to the point. Between each one. All right, let's do that with the other side. And this is just to get this fabric out of the way so when we go to flip it, it will lay smooth. All right, back to pinking. So all curves must be pinked. Remember, do not go through your stitches. Go up to them, but not through them. should have six curves that will be done this way. Three on each end. If I didn't do it in order, now I have to make sure. Oh, yep, I knew I left one. Right, now find your hole. And flip it. We're gonna flip it right side out. So reach in there, grab it, and just start pulling it out. You can also take one of the sides if you're making this for kids and have them embroidered with their names on it before you put it together. There it comes. Okay, first thing we're going to do is make sure that we take our finger inside and run it along these curves 
to make sure it pops out. Check our inside right here and make sure that it is connected well and we don't have any holes. And if you do, this is the time to fix it, not after it's stuffed. Run your finger along here. Okay, looks good. Go to the other side. finger along. Here we are. All right, so now put something good on TV, a podcast, something because now we have to stuff this. So let's grab our stuffing. And this will take a good bit of stuffing. Oh, I lost some hole. It's camouflaged. Oh, here it is. All right, the first thing we need to do is stuff all these curves at the very end. So take a little bit at a time. This is where the hole needs to be big enough that you can actually get a good bit of stuffing in. So we're gonna take it and push it up into that point. Well, curve, it's a curve, it's not a point. You get the point though. All right, now do another one. We don't wanna just start putting it in without putting it in place because then it's gonna be harder to get it up into those areas. So we wanna make sure to get those areas done first before we start filling in the middle. Slowly starting to take shape. Our stepping. Make sure that your pins are away from this part because the last thing you want is to accidentally get a pin stuck in there. I don't believe whoever you're giving this to will appreciate that. Okay, we're good. starting to take shape. Now just keep stuffing. All right, we are almost done. Let's see how much more I can get in. Okay, again, you can use your stiletto here. Make sure to push it around. Now that we can't get our hand in there anymore. Right, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Feels good. I can put it behind my back. Oh. Yes, now I just have to hand stitch that hole closed and keep it or give it as a gift. So when you go to hand stitch this closed, take and either put some clips on the ends or pins and that'll keep it pulled together and just stitch that closed and you're done. Now you can keep it for yourself or give it as a gift. Thank you again for joining us for Make It Monday. Again, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified every time we do one of these. I also wanna show you some of the things we were discussing earlier. Uh, this is a grippy non-slip coating. We actually didn't discuss this, but we did talk about the template plastic that you can use to transfer your pattern onto. If you want to do this a lot, if you wanna make several of these, you can use template plastic. 
to trace out your pattern piece, cut it out. It's a nice hard plastic so you're not cutting into it like you would the paper. And then you can always use this grippy spray to spray the back of it and then when you have it down, it doesn't slide and move. So you're not having to use pattern weights or like earlier when we're trying to hold it, it helps prevent it from shifting. Thank you again for joining and we hope to see you next time on our Make It Monday. Mm -hmm.